This is the lead referee of the PPA, and today he's going to be informing us on the new serve rule that will be taking place at the PPA Masters Tournament this weekend. In speaking with him, we both came to the conclusion that this type of serve will drastically change how everyone hits their serve. This serve only applies to the PPA Masters and the pros playing in the PPA Masters. So based off of how it goes, they may or may not use it in future tournaments, and it may or may not be used for each of us in future tournaments. Now I'm gonna turn the time over to H to explain what this new serve entails. The PPA Masters is right around the corner. And as you know, one of the new rules that's going to be tested at this tournament is a additional serving concept to the volley serve. This is only a test at this tournament. Depending on how it goes, I suppose they'll vote it to be either permanent or temporary for the rest of the year. We'll have to wait and see. But in order for the PPA to get the data that they want to make that decision, it's important that we call service faults as consistently as possible. So it's important for us to understand what the new criteria is. As you can see, I've taped off a mark on my at the top of my hips. That's been a discussion of where in the hips is this, but the definition is below the top of the hips. I've researched this a lot the last couple of days, and I've come to the conclusion that for most players, it's going to put the arm at about a 45 degree angle away from the bottom we should see most of the players drop it from about this point. So if we have a 45 degree angle from our body, if we'll consistently look for that, it should be where the top of the hip is for these players. And of course they need to drop it from that. So with that explanation, you can tell that that's too high. That looks about right. Anything lower is gonna be okay. And whether they squat, wherever they serve from, if that arm angle is about at that 45 degree, then we're gonna see it as a proper serve. We'll see players being squared up at the line and they're going to have to drop the ball from here. Whether they squat down or stand up, as you can see, if the arm is at that angle, then that's what they're gonna be. We may also see them step into the serve because there's a really abbreviated time now from when they drop the ball to when they have to hit it. So they want some, may want some motion as part of their serve as well. We may see some come from the side Try to squat down, do some overhand top spins. I'm wondering if we'll see maybe that. We'll have to make sure that the paddle head is not above the wrist because the other criteria that are already in place for the volley serve still apply. What we'll want to make sure we're looking for is if that arm is higher than a 45 degree angle and the ball is not, is if it's dropped from there, it's going to be a fault. It's not a reserve on a questionable serve. Also, if there's any kind of a toss up at all, it's a fault, not a questionable serve. We're calling that a fault. The ball must be dropped from the top of the hip. So how is this serve any different from the normal volley serve that we normally hit? The volley serve fell under three main criteria. First of all, it had to be below the waist. Second of all, you had to hit up on the ball. And third of all, your paddle has to be below your wrist at the point of contact. All that being said, you can still toss up the ball as you're hitting through the shot. So what that means is they're gonna be looking to see if that arm slightly rises as the player hits their serve, which if you hit a serve, your arm will naturally rise right before you make contact because as your hips come through, that arm naturally comes forward. So this is gonna take a conscious effort from all of these pros. And if they end up passing it, it'll take a conscious effort for each of us to kind of put the ball down as we rotate through. So when I was trying this with H, he said, you probably don't notice this, but you're slightly raising your arm as you're hitting through your serve. And I didn't notice it. So this is what the serve should look like. There can't be any upward motion. And then this would be a minor example of what you can't do. If you watch my left arm, it will slightly rise just as I rotate my hips through, even though I'm dropping it. And I'm not even consciously doing that. Like you can try it for yourself. I want you guys to go out there and try this, but you're just naturally going to have a slight lift as you hit through your shot. So you're gonna have to now kind of push down at the ball. And further speaking with H, I asked him if he would call this serve with that slight rise there. I don't know if you guys could see it. I might slow mo it over so that you guys can see with that slight rise as I come through the ball, if he would end up calling that. And he said, probably not. So I think it'll be interesting to see what these calls end up being based off of what the other players are doing with their arm as they're trying to keep it below their hip. So the cool thing about this tournament is that if players feel like they were wrongly called, they can do a video challenge. And based off of that video challenge, it'll either be that you know the referee was wrong and they redo the serve, 
or the referee was right and it's an instant fault to where it's either second server or side out. And we've seen where players will hit their serve slightly high in other tournaments and it ends up being just an instant redo rather than an actual fault on the serve. Another thing to note is that drop serves are not allowed at this tournament. A drop serve being that the ball bounces before you hit the shot. So we won't be seeing any of those, which I would imagine all the pros would resort to if they could. But in the PPA currently, drop serves are not allowed. So the only serve that we'll be seeing players hit in the PPA is this below the hip serve during this tournament. So then that begs the question, why are they even testing this serve out and why don't they just stick with the original volley serve? In my opinion, I think it's because too many players are getting away with hitting the ball slightly above their navel and slightly above their wrist at the point of contact. So this is what the PPA wanted to implement for this tournament to try to stop that problem. My only rebuttal to that is why don't they just make drop serves legal? Because even with a drop serve, if you drop it above your head, it can't possibly bounce above your waist. Doesn't matter how tall you are because the taller that you are, the higher up your waist comes. But if you guys try this for yourselves, you take a ball and you drop it as at your highest point, it cannot possibly make it above your waist. So I would see that solving this problem for them. And it's impossible to hit it above your wrist from that position and not hit it into the net. But what's your opinion? Should they keep the volley serve? Should they just go to a drop serve? Let me know in the comments below. The main reason that people are adamantly against doing just the drop serve is because if there's any kind of wind, the bounce is very inconsistent. And my only rebuttal to that is it's like, when we play pickleball, we can't help if it's gonna be windy. So we get into a tournament and we're gonna be dinking. And let's say the wind is blowing to the right. Well, all I'm saying in my mind, and this is a good tip for you guys, is I'm not gonna miss anything to the right. And if it's blowing long, I'm not gonna miss anything long. So then I'm gonna to aim to not hit anything to the right. Everything's gonna go middle or to the left as, or straight ahead as I hit my dinks and all of my shots throughout the day. My main goal is just to not miss it that way. So my rebuttal to this serve is to simply drop it into the wind, meaning if the wind's coming in from this direction, I'm simply going to compensate by dropping it in that direction. If the wind is behind me and it's blowing forward, I'm simply going to compensate by dropping it here and then hitting it out in front of me. So I think it's a super simple fix. I'm not sure why people are saying wind is such a big deal, but I'd love to hear your guys' opinions about that in the comments below as well. And if you would like to learn about the new 2024 rule changes, I just uploaded this new video right here. In it, I go over all the major rule changes so that you guys can stay in the know. And then I also go over some honorable mentions. There's some really funny ones in there that will absolutely shock you. People wanting to change the court dimensions, has stuff to do with people's attire and what attire is appropriate. So it's super fun to watch. You can check that out here and I'll see you guys on the next one.